Have you ever wondered if you would survive being a pilot in World War II? Well, you don't have to wander any longer. In this video, you will step into the cockpit of a P-51 Mustang in 1945, and you will go face to face with the legendary Messerschmitt Me-262 jet fighter. Here, you will be faced with five split-second decisions to make as the pilot, and these will decide if you survive. Choose correctly and live to continue the fight. Choose poorly and you may find yourself in a very dire situation. So suit up and strap in as we jump into the cockpit in one of the most iconic dogfights in history. Welcome pilots, as you join us here, you will be playing a major role in this story. You will be the pilot at the controls and you will be making the five key decisions that will determine your fate. Make sure to comment how well you did and if you would have survived. Let's jump in. It is early in 1945 and you are a young 21-year-old pilot in the U.S. Army Air Force. You have been on a handful of missions thus far, but have yet to see any real combat. So for all intended purposes, you are still very green, but today that will change. The assignment for today is a bombing raid deep into the heart of Germany that will see our bombers hit key strategic targets in the Rhineland. You and your flight have been given the ever crucial job of escorting our boys in the fortresses to ensure that they can get their job done. And although they will still face heavy flak as they go along, your primary objective is to keep the nasty Luftwaffe fighters away from them as they near their target. These can include Messerschmitt BF-109s, Focke-Wulf 190s, and the new jet fighter, the Messerschmitt Me-262, which everyone by now has heard stories of. So without further briefing, it's time to suit up and warm up the engines. Alright airmen, let's take off and prepare to link up with our boys. Make sure your oxygen is turned on as we gain altitude, and as always, watch your six. For the last few hours, it was a quiet journey. Little can be heard over the roar of your engine and the weather is beautiful. Unfortunately, it is situations just like this that create the perfect setting for an ambush. In the legendary dogfights of World War II, the majority of pilots who were shot down never even had a chance to realize that their enemy was there. And this is the same scenario that would unfold once again today. As you and your flight of Mustangs carry on in the air, enjoying the scenic views and peaceful quiet of the air, Messerschmitt Me-262s are quietly stalking from above and behind. These Germans are able to reach much higher speeds than your aircraft, and they have set up a perfect ambush, and you are in the crosshair. In seconds, the crackle of cannon breaks through the thin air, and tracers are flying all around. You have no idea whom or what is shooting at you, but all you see is bullets whizzing over the top of your canopy. In the few seconds that you have to react, you have realized that they are obviously bandits shooting at your flight, and based on the angle of fire, they are coming from about 4 o'clock. You have now come to your first decision. As the gunfire continues all around you, you are left with three possible courses of action. The first, Option A is that you can continue to hold formation and fly straight. Hopefully the gunfire will stop and your Mustang will make it out unscathed. Next, Option B, you can roll to the left, turning away from the German bandits and throwing off their aim as they press on with their attack. Or Option C, you can roll to the right, turning into the German fighters that are firing away. So go ahead and choose. Every moment that you wait, another round comes closer to your fighter. All right, let's see what the correct decision was and if you would have survived this first choice. I think we all know that holding formation while under ambush is not the right decision. This choice leaves you as a sitting duck for the opponent and allows their line of fire to be easily aimed right at your aircraft. Pilots who did this often were the ones who simply froze under pressure and did not last very long in combat. What about option B? Turning away from the fighters seems like a logical decision and makes sense, 
But again, this is not the correct choice. One of the essential rules in dogfighting, developed by the top aces in World War I, was actually always to turn into your opponent. If you turn away, you are actually setting yourself up to be in the crosshairs of the enemy for even longer, so this would likely end very poorly as well. And thus, the correct option is actually option C, turning into the German bandits firing at you. This gets you out of their line of fire and actually makes it extremely difficult for any of them to follow you. So, if you chose option C, congratulations, you have survived the first few seconds of this engagement, but buckle up because it is far from over. As you roll to the right, you see Messerschmitt jet fighters soar past you, hammering into some of your friendly Mustangs. Adrenaline courses through your body as you grip the controls tightly. You are lucky to have survived, but now you must come up with a plan. This is where your second decision must be made. The German fighters have now mowed through and are likely going to prepare for another sweep. Do you A. Chase after the German aircraft, hoping to get on the tail of one of the bandits? Or B. Turn from the fight, putting distance between you and the enemy? Or C. Head back to the bombers, sticking next to them to try and protect the friendly Americans? You decide. If you chose option A, chase down the German aircraft, then you likely need to do your homework a bit better. The ME-262 jet fighter is currently the fastest fighter in the skies, and even in your Mustang, you have no chance of actually catching the Germans, who have just pulled out of an attacking dive. Chasing them down will likely just leave you as a sitting duck for the German cannons. If you chose option B, turning from the fight, this may lead to your survival, but it may also lead to disciplinary action. Running from a fight is not acceptable and is ignoring your duty as a US soldier. But if you chose option C, then you have chosen wisely. As the bandits attempt to prepare for a second run, the bombers are going to need protection, and without you, they are wide open targets. Thus, the correct choice is to go above the bombers and wait. Not only does this allow you to protect your objective, but it may also set you up for success, as you know the German fighters are very likely to make a run on the bombers below you. So then, you head back up to the bomber formation and gain some altitude, all the while keeping an eye on the Germans, and this time watching your six a little more closely. It was a tough lesson learned, so you will make sure that an ambush from behind doesn't happen again. As you fly above the bombers now, which are today A-20 Bostons, you can see that dogfighting is taking place here and there, but you stick to your plan and guard the bombers. Fortunately, this pays off and your plan works perfectly. As you watch the bombers from above, you see an ME-262 fighter coming in from behind, preparing for an attack run on the formation, and so you are brought to yet another decision. Option A is to immediately dive down, attacking the 262 from above and behind. Or, alternatively, option B, you can continue and wait, see if there is a better opportunity for you. Or C, knowing that the 262 has better speed, do not even try to chase, and instead gain even more altitude. Again, you have just moments to react, so decide quickly. If you chose option B, you might not be aggressive enough to be a fighter pilot. When your bombers are under attack, the last thing you want to do is sit and wait. Those crew members need your help. The same is true with option C. Gaining altitude at this point will do very little for you, and more importantly, it will leave your bombers for the slaughter. Option A, however, is the correct choice. Once you see the 262 below you, you have already positioned yourself for success in the battle. By diving, you can increase your airspeed and come up behind the 262, which is now flying level. In addition, you have an opportunity to try and complete your objective and possibly even save the lives of the bomber crews. And so you do just that. You point your nose downward and head straight into the fight. Although he is faster than you, for a brief moment, you have the advantage over the Messerschmitt. 
the tables have turned and you open fire, peppering the German aircraft. Almost immediately, one of his engines begins to pour white smoke, likely a coolant or some other necessary fluid. Your heart feels like it will nearly bounce out of its chest. The German immediately turns to the right and for a few seconds you continue the pursuit, desperately wanting to finish the kill and paint that first German insignia on the side of your Mustang. But then you realize something. As you continue to open up with bursts at the 262, who has now lost speed from the engine damage, you see that he is diving down himself now, attempting to lower the level of the dogfight. This doesn't seem to make much sense, as the Mustang is a far superior fighter at lower altitudes. This brings you to yet another choice that must be made. Do you A. Dive down further yourself to try and get below him and see exactly why he is taking you downward? Or B. Continue behind him because you will likely catch the damaged fighter in just a few seconds and will be able to finish the kill? Or C leaving the German and turning back for the formation. Again, you have just seconds to decide. What do you do? This was a crucial decision that will likely make the life or death of a Mustang pilot. So, let's see if you would have survived. In the final year of the war, as the 262 became more widely put into service among the Luftwaffe, German commanders recognized that the long approaches for landing and takeoff needed by the jets were actually their most vulnerable moment, as they were flying slow and straight. So, in an attempt to try and protect their fighters, the Germans made sure to place a very high number of anti-aircraft defenses near the approaches to any of their primary airfields during this time. This helped their pilots survive any attacks from American fighters during these dangerous approaches. They also, however, changed the landscape of the dogfights in the final months of the war. On multiple occasions, German fighters were able to bait Allied aircraft down to lower levels where they were subsequently pounded by flak and machine gun fire. So because of this, if you went with options A or B, you would have very likely found yourself dead within just a minute or two. The German anti-aircraft would have lit up the sky around you and pounded your Mustang you would have likely ended up as killed in action or, if you were lucky, floating downward in a parachute back to the ground in enemy-controlled territory. If you chose option C, however, to turn back and head to the formation, you would have lived to fight another day. And as difficult as leaving a possible kill might be, the name of the game is survival. Target fixation has cost many great pilots their lives, so if you can resist the temptation, you will likely be able to become a formidable fighter pilot. So finally, you make it back to your formation where the fighting has now stopped. Your bombers have successfully released their payloads and hit their targets. As you are about to turn for home, however, you have one final decision to make. Now that you have been baptized by fire and have sent bullets into a dastardly German aircraft, you are sure to be warmly greeted when you get back to the ground. The only question is, who do you want to be greeted by when you go to celebrate your mission success? Option A, Darla the sweet brunette, B, Betty the beautiful blonde, or C, Susan the rowdy redhead. Fortunately for you, there are no wrong answers here. Please make sure to comment how you did with your decisions as the pilot, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, please consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.